So Cameron asks if I can make a video about treating crush and or compartment syndrome. So the first thing to know is compartment syndrome typically occurs from too much edema or swelling. It could occur from trauma. It could occur from sepsis. But so much edema happens that that extremity or piece of tissue limits its blood flow. So take a look at this leg here. Pretty terrible. Now, with regards to the treatment, some of the treatment is the same when we talk about pharmacology, but understand that this patient requires a fasciotomy, which they will literally take a blade and cut it uh, to allow that tissue basically to expand and allow for blood flow. Um, I would say I would show you some photos of fasciotomies, but you're going to have to Google it on your own because TikTok will totally ban me for that. Now, crush patients are something that we look forward to in fire rescue, right? We're looking for hydraulic tools. We want to use lift bags and save this person. Uh, but there are some different treatments that we must do before considering the lift. Now, first thing I want you to consider is that this patient's in pain. And we need to figure out, hey, man, how long has this person been underneath this rubble? Now, if anybody here has some very good feedback that they would like to add to the comments, this is much appreciated. Because when we talk about how long it takes for crush syndrome to set in or to occur, uh, I've seen many different things. Okay, And the last paramedic textbook that was released, they did say up to four hours that person would have to be crushed for you to consider crush syndrome. Now, as for treatment, we need to give this patient oxygen. We need to start an IV and start providing fluids because we're suspecting rhabdomyolysis. On top of that, we need to give analgesics for pain management. Before the lift, we need to consider giving albuterol, believe it or not, as a nebulized treatment up to 10 milligrams, so very high dose, to help draw in that potassium. Because you got to remember when that crush occurs, not only does potassium leak out of the cell, but also myoglobin, which is a protein in the muscle that gets broken down into the bloodstream, and we get an increase in lactic acidosis. Now, sodium bicarb is another treatment that we need to be considering, giving either before that lift or during that lift. And then if we start seeing signs and symptoms of hyperkalemia, you might see peak T waves, you might start seeing sine waves or widened QRS complexes, we need to consider calcium chloride or gluconate, depending on whichever ones you guys are carrying. There's a lot of treatments to this. In the hospital setting, they'll even give insulin and dextrose.